It gives me great pleasure to send greetings to all the participants in the Consultative Conference on International Criminal Justice. In 1998, in Rome, we all committed to make the participation of victims a milestone in international criminal law work. The prosecutor believes that as many victims as possible may participate to express their views and concerns, presenting a different social dimension of crimes and obtaining respect and reparation. Imagine when al-Bashir arrived to the Hague. Of course we have a challenge, of course we have a lot of problems, but it's the end of the crime. And that's what we are doing here. We're working for victims to protect them. And I don't think there's anybody in this room who doesn't, who doesn't feel uh, a, a, a sense of achievement in getting more victims' participation. And it's a great, it's one of the great successes of the Rome Treaty. And, but there are problems. And the problems go back to fair trial. Uh, I'm concerned at the recent decision by, the, by a majority in the trial chamber in the Lubanga trial, which has held that the victims can add new charges and, and, and on new evidence in the middle of a trial. And you have, you have the defense in, the, in, in a difficult position of not only facing the prosecutor, but also teams of lawyers appearing for victims. And, 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 and it's a very daunting, daunting situation. As deputy prosecutor and as a lawyer, I know that it is the concerted efforts of all which will ensure that trials are conducted and they are conducted fairly. The prosecutor's office is committed to further enhance the quality of its work in the courtroom and we will appreciate your suggestions and your comments. There's no question that on the record of the, of, of the judges that the, the first, their first concern uh, is for, for fair trials. If trials are not generally fair and perceived to be fair, then the whole endeavor would fall and it would have been the death of international justice. There's a need also for having internal mechanisms of quality control within the office of the prosecutor to ensure that right from the investigative to the indictment phase to the trial readiness phase, that there is continuous peer review of the work that is being done in order to ensure that the, the cases, the best cases move forward and they move forward in the best possible way. The prosecutor has not only the professional investigative division within his own office, but national arrangements with countries on a bilateral basis where professional police officers from, for example, the Canada would come in to assist the prosecutor. And then you have, on the other side, dealing with the same case of the same magnitude, the same number of witnesses, one or two hapless defense investigators. I mean, when you talk about fair trial, I think we have to put our money where our mouths are and to deepen the amount of resources available to defense so that we actually give meaning to the right to a fair trial and the right to counsel. You can never have equality between defense and prosecution in a domestic or in an international tribunal. There is no comparison. And, and it seems to me that there's been a lot of uh, un unfortunate misunderstanding that's arisen from this concept of equality of arms. The test should be adequate resources for the defense. There must be no question of inadequacy of the resources. You test the fairness of a system not by conviction, but by acquittals. Mm -hmm.